book nine, Go Tell the Bees That I Am God. <laughs> hi, I'm Jess. Welcome to my... Hi. <laughs> I'm Jess. Welcome to my channel. Uh, that's the title of the book that I'm going to be reviewing in the Outlander series. And I know that probably pretty much everyone who's subscribed to me right now is like or like 99% of them are probably not going to be interested in this, so that's okay, like you don't need to watch or comment or anything. But me, I am a big Outlander fan, have been five or six or so years. <laughs> and so I've read all the books and it's been a while and I reread book eight. So that's my little history, just so you know. And I finished this book a month ago actually and it's just taken me a while to gather my thoughts and I'm just like what do I even say about this book? Because mostly I was just happy to read a new book because this was the first time I got to read like a brand new book in a series. <laughs> so I was excited. I had conflicting feelings about it. I, I think I'm just gonna go out and say that I'm gonna, this review is gonna have spoilers. I mean at this point I just have to spoil it. So what does the title even mean? And there's this good quote in the book that says, If somebody leaves or dies and you don't tell the bees, they take offense and the whole lot of them will fly right off. I was trying to keep that in mind for the whole book. Like, what does that mean for the whole book? Okay, I feel like we're kind of lacking a plot. Like, something to push the momentum forward because I wasn't really sure what the main goal of this book was like what is this all building up to and once I finished the book I realized what it was building up to or once I got to like the last like 150 pages I couldn't put it down <laughs> and I was like oh this is what it's all leading up to because I wasn't quite sure I mean honestly I just felt really happy to be a part of these characters lives because in a weird way I feel like the Fraser family is like family to me and like I'm catching up you know what's going on with Bree and Roger and Fergus and Marsley and you know Court Jamie and Claire and then everyone connected with them and their children and in a way it was just kind of recounting all of their experiences and it kind of felt like a um Almost like a non-fiction, slow pace. this is what their life is like. Not so much like, this is a story. It has that feel. <laughs> Which I didn't mind because there were some exciting, really exciting moments that I want to talk about. Um, and I probably will forget <laughs> like half of them. <laughs> because it's just been a while and it was just a lot. Yeah, and it's just interesting to see the progression from the series of the first book was pretty much just Claire and then you get to learn about Jamie and then you kind of learn about Frank and then it kind of starts expanding because then you get the children and then it, you know Bree and Roger become a, a larger part and then it kind of just spreads and spreads and now we just have all these people who are important to us. <laughs> Where do I even begin? Well the beginning, the reunion between uh, you know, Brie and Roger coming back with their kids, and Jamie and Claire, it's like, oh, yay! But I felt just a little bit annoyed <laughs> about how they kind of just went off and did their separate things. So they weren't all together, and they all didn't get the story at the same time. And obviously us, the readers, do not need a huge recap and retelling of everything that happened in the previous book because we read it. <laughs> we read it. Um, but they kept saying like, oh, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. But it was nice to see the reactions, the individual reactions to what went on. And you kind of got Roger and Claire and Bree and Jamie and then Bree and Claire and Roger. You know, like it kind of flip-flopped and told like the important details. And they talked about, you know, what was important to those characters. But like, oh yeah, we'll tell you the rest of it later. Yeah, I think that was probably the best way to handle it in a way. I'm not complaining really. <laughs> uh, but the first thing I want to mention which I found to be important was Faith and how often she was mentioned and this was Claire's first daughter that she lost during birth and that was very just tragic and sad but I noticed 
Faith being brought up a lot, like Jamie and Claire were remembering her, and then Claire was remembering the blue light. Um, and I just rewatched that episode in the show, and I did not see any blue light. <laughs> I don't know if they. Um, I'm just wondering, like, did they put that in the show with the blue light? And it didn't look like there was any, so I don't know if that's ever going to happen on the show. Um, maybe I missed it. Let me know if I'm completely wrong about that, but I didn't see any blue light in the show. Roger talks about his blue light <laughs> experience. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of funny to say it like that out loud. But uh, the blue light experience with him and his throat being healed, and then Claire remembers her blue light experience. And then we get to the moment we were kind of waiting for with the birth. There were a couple of births, but I think it was the one with with Marsley and her twins and Claire delivered one it was okay and then the other looked like it was already dead I'm like oh no I I just started getting all like sad and like oh crap you know like this can't happen okay well before I was a little bit like Claire I don't know if I want you to have this magical power of blue light I don't know that's kind of weird that might be taking it too far time travel yeah I'm fine but I don't know if I want you to be like a magical being because you're just so great being a doctor she does the blue light thing pretty much and I'm like thank goodness because <laughs> actually I I didn't want the baby to die so <laughs> you know who who does thing oh yeah and they also teased faith with uh, Fanny the kind of like adoptive daughter of Claire and Jamie, which I gotta say, uh, now that I think about Fanny, I do like her making a connection with Jamie and Claire, because I was a little bit worried, like, she's living there, but I'm not sure if she's actually gonna be seen as their daughter. Fanny obviously makes a lot of inappropriate remarks because she grew up in a brothel with her sister. <laughs> but anyway, she has this locket of um, their mother, and there's a picture in there, and I guess it's kind of fuzzy, but Claire's like, oh, is this Faith? Maybe Raymond was able to revive my baby because I did that to a baby, so maybe he did that to Faith. Even though there's like a gravestone and everything, and she held her when she was dead. I, I highly doubt that Faith is alive. I'd be more surprised if in the next book somehow this all pans out to be something. So Fanny would be related to Claire, but I really just don't think that would be the books from the future that Brie, bring, Brie brings back. That's hard to say. <laughs> There's this one, I forgot what the title was, but Frank wrote it about like the Scottish in America during the American Revolution. Interesting to read about Jamie's reaction to the book because I think at one point he's like sticking his thumb on, on Frank's face and like whoops I made a smudge. <laughs> There's a lot of different thoughts that he has about it. Well like one, Claire, you never told me that Frank looks like Black Jack Randall. It's something in our minds, especially if we watch the show, they're played by the same actor, um, Frank Randall and Black Jack, and you just don't even think about it, like you didn't even realize that Jamie doesn't even know about that. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you know, Claire's like, oh I didn't want to like upset you, or whatever. He's wondering, like, is he an honest man? Should I trust Frank? Because in the book, there are entries of Jamie Fraser being dead. <laughs> Battles and stuff, and there's one that was coming up, like, I think in a year, that said he was gonna die, but he's like, well, he doesn't distinguish between any of these Jamie Frasers. He doesn't say of Brock Turok or of Fraser's Ridge. I don't know, it could be any of them dying. <laughs> I got the little hints of like a ghost because whenever Jamie and Claire would talk about Frank or when Claire was thinking about him she felt like a presence. She didn't see anything but she like felt something and I'm wondering is Frank a ghost even though technically he's not even born yet? <laughs> Can a ghost time travel? Which kind of brings me to wondering about the biggest question from book one is, is Jamie the ghost in the very beginning of the book? before she even chime travels. And then there was something about a ghost in the attic, like a door slamming or something. But it's like, ooh, is that Frank? Is he trying to get their attention? I don't know. I just thought maybe there's Frank is haunting them. <laughs> Why does that make me happy? I don't know. Whenever we bring up Frank, I get all excited, to be honest. Oh yeah, the, the probably most dramatic death, well, 
second dramatic was Amy Higgins because <laughs> her and uh, Brie and the kids were out and Brie and Amy were picking berries or grapes or something of that sort. One moment Brie is just going along and she realized that Amy's not there and then she like looks and there she is on the ground with this bear gnawing on her and she's like ah! <laughs> just a freak accident and so like everyone comes out and they get the bear away and then they hunt the bear and everything. The funeral and it's so sad and Brie is just like oh that was so close that could have been me that I could have been the dead one I could have easily been Brie. So it kind of a reminder of how just like freak things like that could happen back then. I mean they could happen right now even I guess. Speaking of Brie, um, she, she has atrial fibrillation, <laughs> if I said that right. It's like a heart arrhythmia, it beats too fast. Uh, Claire notices this when she's checking up on her. And then somehow along the way Brie is pregnant <laughs> with her third child with Roger and you know she gives birth and they name him Davy and it appears like he can't time travel. I don't know, I feel like there wasn't really a discussion between Roger and Brie, or did I just like completely forget it about them having a third kid? Because I feel like Brie didn't really want to. My camera turned off so I'm gonna backtrack and hopefully this covers everything. Oh yeah, I thought that was funny when um, Claire tells Brie that she married Lord John Grey <laughs> and Brie is like like, I don't know, she like chokes on her spit or something like that. And cause right at that moment, Jamie's like walking past the window outside and she's like, Bleh. how did, and I completely like forget that Brie doesn't even know what happened to, you know, Jamie and Claire during the previous book. And it's like, oh yeah, that's news to her. Yeah, so I'm a little bit worried about Brie's heart arrhythmia because if anything were to happen Jamie wants them all to go to the future where it's safe and if Brie has a heart problem it could kill her. That could be bad or any moment she could die from like heart problems. I just had a thought maybe Claire could heal her with her blue light power. I don't know if Brie has to be like dead or near death for her to do that though. If it happens we probably know that Claire could save her. Somewhere along the line, Brie gets pregnant and has a baby, names it Davy, and he can't time travel. What are the odds, you know? Both your parents can, but you can't. That sucks. So it's also like, well, now if Davy can't pass through the stones, then really Brie and Roger, one or both, shouldn't, they, they can't leave them behind. I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. Okay. Um, oh, the appearance of Ulysses at the end. It's been a while. I haven't read the books in a couple years talking about Ulysses, so I was just like, whoa! <laughs> like, I, I don't even remember! But, um, he's like, oh yeah, Jamie, we know you're Catholic and you have to get off your land. And he's kind of presented as a villainous character and I just didn't really think he was totally villainous. I mean, I know he like killed people, but wasn't that it for Aunt Jocasta, for his love for her? I, I don't know. Am I missing something? Did I just like not pick up on like Ulysses? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out in the last book. Okay, another news. Uh, Fergus and Marsley, they named their kids after Jamie and Claire. So it's Alexandre plays <laughs> Alexander Fraser. What, what, what I'm, I shouldn't try to speak French. And then... Charles Claire Fraser, which I think is funny that they had a, they, they put Claire uh, hyphenated Charles. Okay, Ian's little venture, well actually it wasn't a little venture, it was a long one through like a, yeah, war-torn. War Fighting's going on, he's making this big long journey to see his ex-wife, who trouble's going on in her village. Rachel, I mean good for you for sticking with your husband, but it seemed like she was okay. She's just kind of wary about it. Meeting the ex-wife and her son, which is named Totus, uh, Mohawk for um, Swiftest of Lizards. I remember Ian naming her kid. I'm not clear if this child is Ian's kid because they make it sound like the kid is his son. I just don't remember that being said before. I just thought she wanted him to name him because like in spirit she thought 
well, oh, they didn't have kids together, so now he can name her next son. But he ends up taking him. Oh, but we get a new dog. Or wolf. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't call it the dog, it's a wolf. And then John Cinnamon, the appearance of John Cinnamon. I haven't read any of Lord John Grey books, and I don't remember him mentioned ever before in this series, so um, this is news to me. But when he shows up and William counters him, and then John Cinnamon's like, I'm Lord John Gray's son. <laughs> I'm like, really? What? <laughs> like, I didn't believe it, but then I kind of got excited. Like, maybe he, maybe he is! Because, I mean, Lord John Gray did have carnal knowledge of Claire, so maybe something else happened. I don't know, you know? Who knows? It turns out he's not his son, but some other guy that is now in England, and he's gonna get a portrait, which was done by Brie. Okay, and then the last thing I have to mention, second to last thing, oh my god, the the death of this major spoiler, but uh, of Jamie. Like, he went into that battle, and it kind of reminded me of the battle of Culloden. Same energy. It's never, it's never easy, and I appreciate that description of it. He, he gets shot at, and like everyone's like he's dead and I was bawling I was emotional I, even now I'm gonna get emotional about it well I'm thinking it could be possible I didn't hear I didn't read anything about the book beforehand so I didn't I wasn't I didn't know for sure if he was gonna die or not it could be possible because the last book could just be about Claire and the rest of the family and they just tie things up there so I, I thought it could be perfectly possible that Jamie would die and then there was just like these weird sequences of scenes about her um and at one point I'm like did she suck the bullet out of his wound or like how did it end up in her mouth I don't know I was just I was just like this is weird but I think the blue light thing happened <laughs> and Jamie was okay <laughs> they're getting old like what are they in this and they're in their 60s by now I don't know but <laughs> I can't keep track but Jamie's such a physical person that if he can't fight and do the things that he used to do, if he doesn't have that vitality in what makes Jamie Jamie, maybe he should have died, I don't know. I mean, but obviously there's more to life than just he loves Claire and he has a family. There are other things in life to live for. Okay, so um, I think that's all I want to say about this book. I'm probably missing like major things. But if you know, maybe just leave them down in the comments, like any other um, exciting moments in the book or thoughts about what you thought in general, too, that would be interesting. <laughs> Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I mean, honestly, I would like to read the Lord John Gray series. I already have a couple of the books. I just need to read them. So I might do that next while I wait for the 10th and probably last book in the Outlander series, which will probably be years from now, but I'll be happy when it comes. Speaking of the last book, it better tie up everything. And I just feel like there's so much going on in this world. If they both die in the last book, yeah, that's acceptable. <laughs> I mean, it's the end, right? Like, it's pretty much the whole series of chronicle of their relationship and everything. So if they die, that's probably a good ending, right? Or if they just live happily ever after. I don't know, I feel like if they're alive, there's always going to be something going on. Because <laughs> they're not going to be able to help themselves with trying to get involved, even though maybe they don't even have the energy for it. That, that's it. Bye.